Life Audio. I think sometimes it's easy for us to forget that the world that we live in is not neutral. It's evil. The prince of this world hates us as believers, and we're always under the spiritual attack. And in fact, it's impossible for us to fight this battle alone. What we're going to be learning about today is how the Lord is on our side. And when we are engaged in spiritual battle that are beyond our resources to fight successfully, our hope is in God's help. I pray that today's episode is a blessing for you. Stay tuned. Hey there, it's Nicole Yunus, host of the How to Study the Bible podcast, where every single week we join together to encounter God through His Word. You can subscribe at lifeaudio.com. Hey friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus podcast. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? And how do you know the difference? Do you ever struggle to feel confident in your relationship with God and what He says in His Word? Do you sometimes feel stagnant or like maybe you hit a wall in your spiritual life? Hey, I'm your host, Rachel Grohl, missionary, author, pastor, and life coach, and I have been there. I too was doubting God's voice in my own life. I felt insecure about my relationship with Him, and I wanted to be obedient to what God was calling me to do, but I wasn't quite sure how to figure out what that was. I felt like I was wasting time trying to figure it out, and I just wanted a way to understand His will for my life. The answer for me was found in the pages of the scriptures as I learned how to understand what they were actually saying. If you're ready to grow in your faith and to step confidently into the calling God has for you, then join me as we dig deep into God's word so that you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. Hey friends, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Grohl. Today we're continuing our Psalm series and we're going to be going through Psalm 124. And this week I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible. That is my favorite version when it comes to reading through and studying God's word. And of course, you can use whatever modern translation that you feel comfortable with. I get that question a lot. And I think consistently, whatever you're going to read that you understand is the one that you should be using. And I've gone into that a couple different times, even just this week. But I wanted to encourage you not to get caught up on even just one translation. I often use lots of different translations. And if I'm studying something specifically, I'll read that passage in a variety of translations. So if you're just joining us, we are offering a little bit of a deeper dive into the Psalms because I think sometimes what happens is because we're far removed from that ancient audience that this was originally written to, we know that the scripture is written for us, but we don't necessarily understand all the nuances or what it actually says. And I know in my own life, I would often read through the Psalms and have the gist of what it was saying, but there was so much I was missing until I really started studying them. So my hope is that this way of that we're studying them, going through them one at a time is helpful for you. If you'd like to dig a little bit deeper and use this as your daily devotional, and again, I don't want to replace your Bible reading. I want to supplement it. So if you would like to use this as your daily devotional, I would encourage you to sign up for my newsletter at shehears.org. And the reason why I say that is because every Monday I send out a journaling prompt that goes along with each of these passages. And the reason I do that is because journaling has been a tool in my own life that God has used to help me get this information from my head and into my heart. If you would like the previous episode's journaling prompts, you can also find that if you go to shehears.org and go to the resources section, you'll see the guided Psalms journals. And what those do is they have the link to the daily audible devotional. They have the space for actually doing the journaling, the journaling prompt, and the key verse for the day. And again, it's just another way to get you to be in God's word and to really process it and understand what God's trying to say to you through the passages of scripture that we're studying. I'm going to be starting in Psalm 124 verse 1. Had it not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel say, had it not been the Lord who was on our side, when people rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive. When their anger was kindled against us, then the waters would have flooded over us. The stream would have swept over our souls. Then the raging waters would have swept over our souls. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us to be torn by their teeth. Our souls have escaped like a bird from the trapper's snare. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Now we know we're reading through the Psalms of Ascent. 
And this one would be considered a Psalm of David, a song of ascent of David specifically. And if you don't know what I mean when I say the Psalm of Ascent, you can go back to listen to the last couple of episodes. But essentially, these are the Psalms that were sung by the pilgrims that were headed into Jerusalem, either on their way or once they got to Jerusalem. And so here what we see is the psalmist is leading Israel in thanking God for this deliverance that they've experienced when there was an enemy that was present that wanted to ravage them. So if you think back to what we talked about yesterday, it was a prayer for God to intervene on their behalf. Today is a thanksgiving to God because he intervened on their behalf. And so this is a short little psalm, but it's remarkable how many vivid metaphors there are about the potential destruction that the psalmist uses to communicate the danger that they were facing as a community. And that, of course, then heightens this idea of how great God is, as he is the one who saved them. So verses one through five, where it talks about the Lord being on their side, there's something called parallelism that opens the psalm, meaning there's a parallel, there's a repetitive well, I guess you would call it a staircase that, well, let me just read it. It says, if the Lord had been on our side, that is repeated twice. And what that is doing is it's building suspense. And so after the first time we read it, the psalmist then calls on the congregation to join in where he says, let Israel say, and that indicates that this was one of those psalms that would have been used in the public worship. And you know, you, we've all kind of witnessed, if you've not experienced it, maybe you've seen it on TV where the leader of the worship or the leader of the service would say something and then ask for the congregation to respond and say that as well. That's essentially what's happening here. And so in verse two, it's identifying the situation where God's presence was critical. And it's a talking about this attack that Israel had from their enemies. And if God had not been present, according to verse three, the enemies who were driven by this anger would have defeated them. And so verse three is describing this defeat as a swallowing kind of defeat. And the enemy would have swallowed Israel alive. That's probably a mythological allusion to one of the Canaanite gods, um, I think the name was Mot, M-O-T, which meant death and how he swallowed Baal. And so Mot was described, you have to remember, we're talking about Israel, which is in the setting of the ancient Near East, ancient Mesopotamia, where everywhere around Jerusalem, everywhere around Israel, they would have been worshiping these false gods. So the people at the time would have understood these references because it was a very, it was common knowledge what, what Baal was and what these other false gods did. And so at the time, Moat would have been described as a God whose upper lip is in the heavens and his lower lip is on earth and he would swallow everything in his path. And so what verse four is doing is it's using a different ancient mythological illusion for that same idea, that same purpose. And then it, of course it talks about how the waters would have swept them away. I actually think we're going to take a little bit of a break right now. And then when we come back, we'll go through the rest of the psalm. Stay tuned. Once in a generation, a podcast comes along with the power and eloquence to inspire us all. This show will entertain you while you wait for that one. Join two best friends, author and former history teacher John Driver and comedian Johnny W. for hilarious and authentic conversations about life, history, culture, faith, and everything in between. You can listen to Talk About That wherever you find your podcasts or at lifeaudio.com. So now as we go on to the second half of the psalm, verses 6 to 8, it's talking about this idea of escape. God was there with them. And because of God's presence with them, they were able to escape the anger of the enemy that was coming after them. And without God's help, they would have been torn apart. Just like the imagery of how a wild animal devours its prey. They would have been trapped. It talks about how the fowler snares a bird. They would have been trapped like that bird that's getting ready to, to be eaten. And there's this act of divine deliverance that leads to this confidence as they're proclaiming that God, who is the creator, that's Israel's helper, has acted on their behalf. The psalmist is leading this community as they give thanks to God. And he's talking about how God has rescued them from the hands of an enemy that was intent on destroying them. 
I wonder if you realize that that's what happens for us every day. We have an enemy that is intent on destroying us. And yet we have a God that protects us even when we don't even realize what's going on. God was on their side. And the implication here is that he wasn't just passively there, but he was on their side as this warrior who not just fought, but defeated their enemies. And there's no specific event mentioned there, which means it could have been used multiple times for different, maybe similar, but not identical situations. As the historical books that we read in the Old Testament contain so many stories, and even in the Psalms that we've been reading in the last couple of months, about how God has saved his people. Um, you know, if you think back through even just what the, this people group has experienced, the escape at the Red Sea when they were escaping the Egyptians and how God parted the waters. As believers, as Christians in the modern world, we are engaged in this spiritual battle. I actually want to read Ephesians 6, 10 through 20 real quick. It's talking here about spiritual battle. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist on the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having belted your waist with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having strapped on your feet the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. With every prayer and request, pray at all times in the spirit, and with this in view, be alert, and with all perseverance and every request for all the saints, and pray in my behalf that speech may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known the boldness of the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in proclaiming it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak." And so there, it's a reminder from Paul that as believers, we are constantly engaged in this spiritual battle that is beyond our resources to fight with any measure of success. And so our only hope is in understanding that we need God's help. And so what this psalm is doing is it's showing us this model of prayer that is directing us to give thanks to God as the one who supplies us with those spiritual weapons and that armor that we need in order to escape the attack of the enemy. And so Paul voices that same confidence that the psalmist says when Paul declares in Romans, he says, if God is for us, who can be against us? That's the same thing that we're seeing that the psalmist is writing here in this passage. So given that insight, I'm going to go back and I'm going to start at verse one again of Psalm 124. Had it not been said, the Lord who was on our side, let Israel say, had it not been the Lord who was on our side, when people rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive. When their anger was kindled against us, then the waters would have flooded over us. The stream would have swept over our souls, then the raging waters would have swept over our souls. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us to be torn by their teeth. Our souls have escaped like a bird from the trapper's snare. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Father God, we recognize that without your help, we are powerless against the enemy of this world. Lord, I pray for my friend today. They may be fighting the spiritual battle. Lord, help them to recognize that you do not leave us to fight alone. And that it's not just that you're with us in the fight, but you are fighting on our behalf. It's the only way that we can win. So Lord, I thank you for your presence in our lives through the power of the Holy Spirit, the way that you continue to defend us, to fight on our behalf. Lord, I pray for my friend today that they would sense the tangible presence that is the reality of having the Holy Spirit inside of us. Lord, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for the way that you reveal your character and your nature through your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I know you've been frustrated with being confident in how to tell the difference between hearing from God and wondering if it's your own voice. Listen, I know, I've been there myself. That's why I wrote the Bible study, She Hears, Learning to Listen to Jesus. This is a six-week study that takes you through the book of John, looking at six women in the life of Jesus. It also teaches the color method of Bible study, which helps you to learn how to really understand the scriptures. 
I include lots of cultural and historical information, and it really makes these familiar passages of scripture just come alive. This is a great study to do on your own, to do with some girlfriends or even some teenage girls, and it will help you really gain the confidence in how to hear from the Lord and set you up with some tools that will stay with you long after the study is over. You can find that on my resources page at shehears.org, where there are also some really good resources to help you in your spiritual growth. I pray that they are a blessing for you. I want to take just a second to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on the podcast. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you'll find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more. Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you for God's call in your life, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you this week. Know that you are loved, you are cherished, and you are His. Has fear stolen your peace? I'm Jennifer Slattery, lead host of the Faith Over Fear podcast, helping you fight your fears and grow your faith. Subscribe at lifeaudio.com.